So the folks at RPD Lab Studio has just recently released the Fluid Lab. Fluid Lab is a brand new fluid tool that now allows you to create impressive fluids directly in Blender with the use of the Smoothed Particle Hydrodynamic System, which allows you to use geometry node to create meshes and create some interesting simulations. So whether you're trying to generate realistic simulations such as fluids, slimes, or even viscous bodies, you can now simply rely on this tool and get it going. And today we're going to take a look at it and see a couple of interesting things that this brings to the table. And for those who like to see this and actually grab it you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can download it and start playing with it and with that said let's dive right into it so with blender simply open right here how you get to work with this is extremely easy the first things you need to do is once you get the add-on you need to go over to edit go over to preference and install the add-on and with that done once you tap n on the keyboard you notice that we've got fluid lab we're simply going to go over to the fluid lab let's drag this out in about four steps you do have your simulation running so Let's go. Have an object selected, click to add this into a group. In this case, we just want to make this an inflow and we're going to add this as an emitter. And that's it. Actually, it took three steps instead of four. And once you press your playback button, you start having an emission. What do you say? Collision? Okay. So if you like to have collision, that is super easy. All you need to do at this point is have an object selected, go over to the colliders and add this as a collider. It is that simple. You no longer need domains to get these things going. And once you press your playback button, look at how interesting it is. There's a couple of things that we're going to talk about to get you guys going with this. And you can see by the fold that this just simply makes simulation easy. So for this case, what we're going to do is just simply go over here and I will just go ahead and add the loop. Right. So why we're adding this loop is because we want to drag these all the way down and potentially we're also going to go over and tap one on the keyboard just to make sure that we get this all the way up and create that very interesting slope. With this, we can do a simple playback right now and you would notice that we have the fluid pouring all the way out and this is just incredible and you might be wondering how do you control some of these things and how you control them is very easy so by default you've got different kinds of fluid groups that you can add so just in case you know you want to make multiple fluid groups at this point you do have the geometry and the inflow what we've just seen is the inflow whereas the geometry gives you a splash of fluid so in this case once we make this a geometry and press the playback button we do have a splash of fluids if you want an inflow which simply means that the geometry generates fluids or fluids are generated from that tree to a particular point then we need to select inflow click on ok click on add emitter and if we press the playback button you now see it what controls this exists within the fluid settings so if you go over to fluid settings you would notice that you can choose to emit fluids either from faces from volumes or from vertices so depending on what you want and what actually fits what you're creating then you can go ahead and do that the next thing deals with the count so by default once you're creating fluids you need to know how much particle counts you want to make 25,000 we're simply going to crank this up to 50 yeah just because we can and we're going to press the play button and you can see that happening. Another thing which you might also find very interesting to know is the size. So each particle does have a size. So in this case, we can set this to about 0.02. Let's actually make that 25, which is going to be half. And if we press the playback button, you notice we've got even smaller particles as well. You can, of course, go ahead and play with the random size if you want. And in this case, I'm just simply going to go all the way back and set it to what it is. There's also a few other things that might make a lot of sense, especially if you're trying to create longer simulations. So in this case, this is set to the start and the end frame. If we set this to about 50, watch what happens once we do a playback. You would notice that once this gets to 50, the simulation stops. Every other thing that just happens is a result of simulations that has happened previously. So if you want to get your simulations to last longer, this is basically where you set it. So we can set these to about 100, you know, set this to about 250 if you want. The lifetime deals with how long the particle stays in the scene before it dies off. You can of course go ahead and make those changes yourself and the same thing can be set for resolution as well. There's also a few physics tools that you can work with. So within the physics system, you can set out the viscosity. So probably we want to set this to about 75. You can do that. If you want the stiffness to be slightly harder, you can also do that as well. And you can play with the dragging and the damping. The results that you'll be getting will be totally different from once you drop these things a bit lower. The same thing can be said for the mass as well. So in this case, if we would like to crank this mass a little bit more, say maybe we want to make this about eight, you would also tell that the simulation for the mass looks pretty different compared to what we have once this is set to 0 0.1. 
Now there's a few other things that I believe a lot of you guys may want to know about which deals with forces. So you can add a few forces here. There are some forces that you can add. If we would like to add some wind forces, of course we can. So we can go over to the force field and we can choose to throw in that wind. So I'm just going to move this over to this point and we can do a simple rotation like so. And I can simply add that. So we can add this as well and automatically once we do a simple playback you would notice that we have that wind blowing so we can go ahead and animate this let's actually bring let's actually bring this down set this all the way back and we can see that simulation going on and we can just go ahead and play with the forces do some very interesting looking stuff and start creating beautiful looking simulations so if you like to create meshes, what you can do is literally this. Have the object selected and you can go over to the mesh section and click on add mesh. This is going to mesh the fluid group. So we can click on that and automatically we have ourselves a mesh. So if we simply switch to the render and this way you can start making these simulations yourself. And if you're wondering about shading, what kind of shaders do we have? There's a couple of shaders that you can play with, okay? So you can go over to the shading section, go all the way down here. This comes with a good number of shaders that you can mix, match and set. Like in this case, we've just set this to honey. And if we like to set this to something totally different, we can of course go ahead and do that. In terms of rendering, there are various rendering parameters that you can play with and this deals with both cycles ev and also your viewports and speaking about things that you can also play with there are fluid presets so if you like to create honey or probably oil you can set this preset and you can use them to generate your own simulation and by every means if you like to start creating some very interesting fluids and you don't want to deal with all that domain and you need something that is fully procedural that is super easy to control and create stuff with then you can simply go ahead and check out fluid lab now there's just one thing that i wasn't able to figure out probably there might be some guidance with the documentation later on and that has to do with fluid interaction now fluid interaction just simply deals with multiple fluids mixing up together and and I would really, really want to explore that as that is something I would love to see. Of course, this does the interaction with various fluids mixing together. But in terms of mixing different fluids, say a chocolate and a honey, that doesn't seem to be working as much as I can tell. But other than that, every other thing seems to be working super fine. And of course, once you're done, you can proceed to bake all of this and get it going. And this real-time looking fluid simulation just simply makes it all worth it and of course if you like to check out some of the cool things that the folks at rbd lab has put together then the fluid lab is definitely one of them and by every means if you go over to the rbd lab studio you can also check out the rbd 1.5 metal soft and also the vdb which is currently doing a 25 percent off so this is it tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and until i see you guys in the next one Peace.